Psalm 2. Quarte premierum. The vain efforts of persecutors against Christ and his church. Why have the Gentiles raged and the people devised vain things? Kings of the earth stood up, and the princes met together against the Lord and against his Christ. Let us break their bonds asunder, and let us cast away their yoke from us. He that dwelleth in heaven shall laugh at them, and the Lord shall deride them. Then shall he speak to them in his anger and trouble them in his rage. But I am appointed king by him over Sion, his holy mountain, preaching his commandment. The Lord hath said to me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I will give thee the Gentiles for thy inheritance, and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt rule them with a rod of iron, and shalt break them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And now, O ye kings, understand, receive instruction, you that judge the earth. Serve ye the Lord with fear, and rejoice unto him with trembling. Embrace discipline, lest at any time the Lord be angry, and you perish from the just way. When his wrath shall be kindled in a short time, blessed are all they that trust in him. Psalm 2 of Exposition on the Book of Psalms by St. Augustine Why do the heathen rage, and the people meditate vain things? The kings of the earth have stood up, and the rulers taken counsel together, against the Lord and against his Christ. It is said why, as if it were said in vain. For what they wished, namely Christ's destruction, they accomplished not. For this is spoken of our Lord's persecutors, of whom also is made mention in the Acts of the Apostles. Let us break their bonds asunder, and cast away their yoke from us. Although it admits of another acceptation, yet it is more fitly understood as in the person of those who are said to meditate vain things, so that, let us break their bonds asunder, and cast away their yoke from us. Maybe, let us do our endeavor that the Christian religion do not bind us, nor be imposed upon us. He that dwelleth in the heavens shall laugh them to scorn, and the Lord shall have them in derision. The sentence is repeated, for he who dwelleth in the heavens, is afterwards put, the Lord, and for laugh them to scorn, is afterwards put, shall have them in derision. Nothing of this, however, must be taken of a carnal sort, as if God either laugheth with cheek and derideth with nostril, but it is to be understood of that power which he giveth to his saints, that they seeing things to come, namely, that the name and rule of Christ is to pervade posterity and possess all nations, should understand that those men meditate a vain thing. For this power whereby these things are foreknown is God's laughter and derision. He that dwelleth in the heavens shall laugh them to scorn. If by heavens we understand holy souls, by these God, as for knowing what is to come, will laugh them to scorn and have them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. For showing more clearly how he will speak unto them, he added, he will vex them, so that in his wrath is in his sore displeasure. But by the wrath and sore displeasure of the Lord God must not be understood any mental perturbation, but the might whereby he most justly avengeth, by the subjugation of all creation to his service. For that is to be observed and remembered, which is written in the wisdom of Solomon. But thou, Lord of power, judgest with tranquility, and with great favor orderest us. The wrath of God, then, is an emotion which is produced in the soul which knoweth the law of God, when it sees this same law transgressed by the sinner. For by this emotion of righteous souls Many things are avenged, although the wrath of God can be well understood of that darkening of the mind which overtakes those who transgress the law of God. Yet I am set by him as king upon Zion, his holy hill, preaching his decree. This is clearly spoken in the person of the very Lord our Savior Christ. But if Zion signify, as some interpret, beholding, we must not understand it 
of anything rather than the church, where daily is the desire raised of beholding the bright glory of God, according to that of the apostle, but we with open face beholding the glory of the Lord. Therefore the meaning of this is, yet I am set by him as king over his holy church, which for its eminence and stability he calleth a mountain. Yet I am set by him as king, I, that is, whose bands they were meditating to break asunder, and whose yoke is cast away, preaching his decree. Who doth not see the meaning of this, seeing it is daily practiced? The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. Although that day may seem to be prophetically spoken of, on which Jesus Christ was born according to the flesh, yet as today intimates presentality, and in eternity there is nothing past, as if it had ceased to be, or future, as if it were not yet, but present only, since whatever is eternal always is. A divine interpretation is given to that expression. Today have I begotten thee. Whereby the uncorrupt in Catholic faith proclaims the eternal generation of the power and the wisdom of God, who is the only begotten Son. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the nations for thine inheritance. This has at once a temporal sense with reference to the manhood which he took on himself, who offered up himself as a sacrifice in the stead of all sacrifices, who also maketh intercession for us, so that the words, Ask of me, may be referred to all this temporal dispensation, which has been instituted for mankind, namely, that the nation should be joined to the name of Christ, and so be redeemed from death and possessed by God. I shall give thee the nations for thine inheritance, which so possess them for their salvation, and to bear unto thee spiritual fruit, and to the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. The same repeated, the uttermost parts of the earth is put for the nations, but more clearly, that we might understand all the nations, and thy possession stands for thine inheritance. Thou shalt rule them with a rod of iron, with inflexible justice, and thou shalt break them like a potter's vessel. That is, thou shalt break in them earthly lusts, and the filthy doings of the old man, and whatsoever hath been derived and inured from the sinful clay. Now understand ye kings, and now, that is, being now renewed, your covering of clay worn out, that is, the carnal vessels of error which belong to your past life. Now understand, ye who now are kings, that is, able now to govern all that is servile and brutish in you, able now, too, to fight, not as they who beat the air, but chastening your bodies and bringing them into subjection. Be instructed, all ye who judge the earth. This again is a repetition. Be instructed is instead of understand, and ye who judge the earth instead of ye kings. For he signifies the spiritual by those who judge the earth. For whatsoever we judge is below us, and whatsoever is below the spiritual man is with good reason called the earth, because it is defiled with earthly corruption. Serve the Lord with fear. Lest what is said, ye kings and judges of the earth, turn into pride, and rejoice with trembling. Very excellently is rejoice added, lest serve the Lord with fear should seem to tend to misery, but again, lest this same rejoicing should run on to unrestrained inconsiderateness, there is added with trembling, that it might avail for a warning and for a careful guarding of holiness. It can also be taken thus, and now ye kings understand, that is, and now that I am set as king, be ye not sad, kings of the earth, as if your excellency were taken from you, but rather understand and be instructed. For it is expedient for you that ye should be under him by whom understanding and instruction are given you. And this is expedient for you, that ye lord it not with rashness, but that ye serve the Lord with all fear, and rejoice in bliss, most sure and most pure, with all caution and carefulness, lest ye fall therefrom into pride. Lay hold of discipline, lest at any time the Lord be angry, and ye perish from the righteous way. This is the same as understand and be instructed. For to understand and be instructed, this is to lay hold of discipline. Still, in that it is said, lay hold of, 
it is plainly enough intimated that there is some protection and defense against all things which might do harm unless with so great carefulness it be laid hold of lest at any time the lord be angry is expressed with a doubt not as regards the vision of the prophet to whom it is certain but as regards those who are warned for they to whom it is not openly revealed are wont to think with doubt of the anger of god this then they ought to say to themselves let us lay hold of discipline lest at any time the lord be angry and we perish from the righteous way now how the lord be angry is to be taken has been said above and ye perish from the righteous way this is a great punishment and dreaded by those who have had any perception of the sweetness of righteousness for he who perisheth from the way of righteousness in much misery will wander through the ways of unrighteousness when his anger shall be shortly kindled blessed are all they who put their trust in him that is when the vengeance shall come which is prepared for the ungodly and for sinners not only will it not light on those who put their trust in the lord but it will even avail for the foundation and exaltation of a kingdom for them for he said not when his anger shall be shortly kindled say for all they who put their trust in him as though they should have this only thereby to be exempt from punishment but he said blessed in which there is the sum and accumulation of all good things now the meaning of shortly i suppose to be this that it will be something sudden whilst sinners will deem it far off and long to come